managing employees strategically is a lot like looking for the right tool for the job. The different practices used to carry out the primary HR activities are managers' tools. These practices may actually be knowledge, skills, or abilities, but are nonetheless tools that we use to accomplish organizational goals through the management of human resources. Organizational demands are factors within a firm that affect decisions regarding how to manage employees. We focus specifically on the demands highlighted here, strategy, company characteristics, organizational culture, and employee concerns. A strategy is a company's plan for achieving competitive advantage. Company characteristics refer to the differences in size and stage of development. Organizational culture is a set of underlying values and beliefs that employees at an organization share. Finally, employee concerns are those issues that need to be championed through the proper management of human resources. Shown here, while strategy sets the overall objectives for the company, it also sets parameters for needed employee contributions or how people add value within the company. Different strategies require different employee contributions to create competitive advantage. Two companies are the same. Companies differ in size and stage of development, and these differences relate directly to how they manage employees. Company characteristics represent the second organizational demand in our framework. Have you ever noticed how different companies seem to have unique personalities? An organizational culture can simply be defined as how we do things around here. It's a set of very basic assumptions, values, and beliefs of a company's members. Up to this point, we've focused on aspects of companies, strategies, characteristics, and culture. There's one additional component of organizational demands that's critical to consider the employees themselves. To understand how employees view and react to different HR practices, we need to think about how they view their relationship with the organization. In many ways, this is all about an exchange. We pay, give benefits, and train, and provide incentives for employees to perform their jobs in exchange for a commitment and work for the organization. Issues of justice focus primarily on expectations of employees about how they should be treated while well at work. Understandably, employees expect to be treated fairly. The challenge is that, unlike with legal issues that also govern how em employers manage their employees, there's no clear-cut standards regarding fairness. Fairness is in the eye of the beholder. What's fair to one might be unfair to another. Managers' employees may disagree regarding the extent of fairness in an organization. But even while individuals differ on how they view fairness, there are three primary aspects of the relationship with their companies that employees tend to monitor. Distributive, procedural, and interactional justice. Distributive justice is the fairness of what individuals receive from organizations in return for their effort. Ideally, this is a balanced exchange, with employees receiving compensation and other benefits of equal value for the time and effort they put into their jobs. Procedural justice focuses on whether the processes that are used that affect employees are viewed as fair. A number of factors influence perceptions on fairness. For example, employees are more likely to accept evaluations or decisions regarding pay raises when they believe that the methods used to make those decisions are consistently applied to all employees. Interactional justice represents how employees feel they are treated by their managers and supervisors in everyday interactions. Do managers treat me politely and respectfully? The underlying principle of interactional justice is how managers treat their employees is something that's important to employees as actual decisions in their treatment. Employees may engage in several actions in response to perceived violation of these issues of justice. First voice. Actions an employee might take to correct a situation that he or she might view as unfair. Silence, a form of non-response and unwillingness to live with the circumstances. Neglect, fail failure to completely fulfill duties. Exit, departure from the company. Or destruction, counterproductive behavior that damaged the organization, like vandalism, theft, or aggression. Whereas organizational demands are factors that exist within the boundaries of a company, environmental influences are pressures that exist outside the company. And while there are certainly many of these, our framework focuses on four. Labor market trends, technology, globalization, and ethics and social responsibility.
According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, our labor force is changing, and we're going to have to deal with that. Specifically, the composition of the workforce is becoming both older and more diverse. In the year 2020, the youngest baby boomers will be 56 years old. Companies are now realizing that they need to start planning for the graying workforce, the largest sector of our population. The percentage of individuals 55 and older in this group continue to grow compared to the rest of the workforce. In contrast, the growth rate of individuals in younger age groups are markedly smaller and are expected to decrease by 7% by 2016. The aging labor force of the United States is an issue that we need to deal with. To strategically manage our human resources, we need to understand and embrace the demographic diversity of that labor force. For example, women are expected to make up 47% of the labor force by 2022. It's forecasted that by 2020, there will further be 46 million Hispanics in the U.S. population. The Bureau of Labor Statistics projects that by 2050, Hispanics will make up 24% of the U.S. labor force, Blacks 14% and Asians 11%. Between 1990 and 2000, the foreign-born population of the United States increased by 57%, with 52% being from Latin America, 26% from Asia, and 16% from Europe. These are just a couple of statistics to represent the vast and growing diversity of our labor force, important to the strategic management of human resources.